Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be bringing you a book haul. Now I did not expect to accumulate so many books in such a short space of time, but yet here we are. You know, I've moved to a new place, I've been exploring the bookshops, I've been a bit sad, so that also gives me reason to buy books. <laughs> I think I've got like somewhere between 15 and 20 books to talk about today but I think I got about half of them for free because I had some um, like vouchers left from my old job. Now before we get into the books I do quickly want to mention something that I have been talking a relative amount across all of my social media but that is the fact that I am doing a 6k walk in aid of the Alzheimer's Society. I'm gonna be doing that walk in September and I am doing fundraising for that so I am aiming to to raise 250 pounds and I think as of me filming this I've just hit a hundred pounds which I'm super super pleased with and thank you so much to everyone who has donated and if you would like to donate to that I will leave the link down below the Alzheimer's Society do fantastic work so you would be doing a very good deed of the day and also putting a really massive smile on my face. So anyway, let's get into the books. So the first book I'm going to tell you guys about is Girls on Fire by Robin Wasserman. I believe this is a book about female friendships and female adolescence. It's about a girl who is bullied and then she ends up forming a friendship with a girl named Lacey after the boyfriend of the girl that bullies her killed himself. On the back it is compared to The Virgin Suicides but I'm also getting slight like the Heathers vibes from it so you know the film and like the stage musical. I don't know if that's an accurate comparison but it's just kind of like the vibes I'm getting from it. Next up I have Call Me By Your Name by Andre Ackerman. You may have seen this book doing the rounds recently um, because of the film tie-in. This is the film cover and normally I don't like film covers of books but I really like this one and it also did a lot of rounds during Pride Month. This is set on an Italian Riviera and is about the love story between two young men. It's a summer romance, it only lasts six weeks but it leaves a profound impact on both of the boys and I'm really looking forward to reading this one and then watching the film afterwards. Next up I have The Jungle by Pooja Puri. This is a book that I knew nothing about when I picked it up but I was just in a bookshop and it really stood out to me. It is published by Ink Road which is a publisher that I've really grown to love over the past year or so. It is about a boy named Miko who leaves his home and his family in search of a better life and I believe it is also set in um, Calais refugee camps. So obviously it is about that experience but it is also about the friendship that he forms with a character named Layla. It's very rare that I will go into a bookshop and buy a book having never heard of it prior to like that shopping trip but this one really stood out to me so hopefully I enjoy it. In contrast to that this next book is a book that has been on my radar for quite a long time and that is The Comet Seekers by Helen Sedgwick. This follows two characters, one named Roisin who grew up in a rural Irish town and Francois who I believe grew up in France. We loop back through their lives leading up to the point where they meet in Antarctica when they are searching for a comet overhead. It's a love story, it has a lot to do with fate and destiny. I absolutely love this cover design as well, it is beautiful. Next up I have some contemporary women's fiction which is a genre that I am reading a lot more of recently and I have Here's Looking at You by Mary McFarlane. So this, like a lot of contemporary women's fiction, is about a woman in her 30s. She goes on quite a lot of odd dates but she is really really happy with how her life has turned out. She's got a job that she absolutely loves. She's just really really happy with her life. But things weren't always like that. She had a bit of a rough time at school, went to a comprehensive in East London and when the person who orchestrated her final humiliation at that school ends up back in her life, she begins to see him as a very changed person. I have heard a lot of good things about this author so I'm really looking forward to trying this one out. Next up I have Knights of the Circus by Angela Carter. I first read Angela Carter in my first semester of university way back when. I read The Bloody Chamber which I think is a book that is on a lot of university reading lists if you study English literature and it is one of the books that left the one of the most laugh lasting impacts on me. But I've not read anything by Angela Carter since then and I've heard that her novels are actually even better than The Bloody Chamber. I believe this one is about a woman who performs in a circus and she's like 
half swan and an American journalist begins to look into her true identity. Again, another absolutely beautiful cover design as well. I mean, I just spoke about beautiful cover designs and I think this one, you know, it, it, it takes the gold medal. This is A Far From The Tree by Robin Benway. Now when I first came across this book, I was like, oh, do I just want to read it because it has such a beautiful cover, but then I heard a brilliant review of it from Lindsay over at The Wandering Reader who really enjoyed this book. This is about 16 year old Grace who gives up a baby for adoption and it is about that prompting her to begin discovering more about her own biological family. She meets two siblings that she didn't know existed and it begins her on this journey of wondering where she actually belongs. Next up, I've got a thriller, would you believe, and it is The Sick Rose by Erin Kelly. You may have heard of Erin Kelly from her novel He Said, She Said, which I am yet to read, but I've heard very good things about. This book follows the romantic relationship between two main characters. First of those is Paul, who has been led into like a life of crime by a school friend named Daniel. Age 19, he has to bear witness against his friend to avoid imprisonment. And then we have Louisa who, having fled her own dark past, is now spending her days renovating an Elizabethan mansion. A relationship develops between the pair but it becomes obvious that neither of them can outrun their violent pasts. Thriller-a-thon is coming up, hosted by the brilliant Harriet Rosie, so I think this is one that I will be picking up for that. Next up I have two books by the same author, the first of which is The Beach Hut by Cassandra Parkin. And it may seem obvious, but this book is centred around a beach hut. On a peaceful Cornish beach, two siblings achieve a childhood dream of building a beach hut. They plan for this illegal beach hut to be their home until Ava, the sister, departs for an around the world adventure. But a local publican is determined to get rid of them. He is mourning the death of his wife and just wants to raise his daughter in a safe environment. But his daughter Alicia is battling her own demons as well. The beach hut stirs up a lot of memories and it's all about um, secret histories and pasts. And on the front we have a review from Jen Campbell that says a beautiful maze of hidden pasts, family ties and fairy tales which is ticking a lot of boxes for me so you've done well there Jen. And the second Cassandra Parkin novel I have is Lily's House. This is about a woman named Jen and her daughter who go and stay in Jen's grandmother's house for the very last time. Grandmother being the Lily of the title. Now when Jen was growing up she was convinced that Lily was a witch. After Lily's death, Jen begins to confront the secrets of their past. So similar kinds of themes there. And the last line of the blurb really got me intrigued and it says, and discover how dangerous we become when we're trying to protect the ones we love. You may have heard of Cassandra Parkin before because she wrote New World Fairy Tales, which is quite a popular um, collection of fairy tale retellings. Next up, I have Sebastian Barry's Days Without End, and this won the Costa Book of the Year prize in 2016, and I've heard a lot of good reviews about it. This is about two young men that sign up for the US Army in 1850, and it is about the aftermath of that, the relationship that is formed between the two of them, the difficulties they face because of what they saw at war and then when a young Indian girl crosses their path the possibility of lasting happiness seems within reach if only they can survive. As I said heard so many fantastic things about this book and always happy to have another Irish writer on my TBR as well. Got a few books now aimed at I suppose slightly younger readers um the first of which is Hour of the Bees by Lindsay Ager. This was a book that I hadn't heard of before but I started looking up books on a particular theme and this is one that I was interested in getting and then I went second hand book shopping and I just saw it and it felt like fate. This is about a young girl named Carol who is coming to terms with her grandfather's dementia or memory loss. She also seems to think that bees are following her everywhere. There seems to be something strange to the stories that her grandfather tells her and it kind of sends her imagination a little bit wild and this is also a book about discovering the secrets in your family history. Next up I have Nevermore by Jessica Townsend and this is a book that I've been so excited to pick up since I started to hear all the hype about it. It is often compared to Harry Potter which does always make me feel cautious going into a book but I actually do kind of trust this one in that it has that same kind of magical, mysterious, um, comforting atmosphere. Our protagonist in this novel is called Morrigan Crow, and she is destined to die on her 11th birthday. 
but then she doesn't. She is whisked away and taken to Nevermore, where she is invited to join the Wondrous Society, and she has to pass for seemingly impossible tasks. I've heard nothing but good things about this one, so I'm so excited to try it out. Next up, I have All the Wrong Questions by Lemony Snicket. You probably know Lemony Snicket from a series of unfortunate events. I absolutely love those books. I love the writing style of them, and I know it's kind of, you either love those books or you hate them, but I absolutely love them, and th if this has a similar writing style, then I'm definitely going to enjoy it. I don't really know anything about it other than it's about a missing girl. I have three works of non-fiction to talk to you guys about and then we're all done. The first of those is Owen Jones' The Establishment. Owen Jones is a political journalist, he also has a YouTube channel, and this book is all about him detailing the British political establishment. I'm intrigued to find out how relevant this book is nowadays because it, was, it wasn't published too long ago. It was only published four years ago but obviously a lot of political stuff has happened in those four years but it is a book that has been on my radar for a really long time so I'm really pleased I finally picked up a copy of it. I also have This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay and these are the diaries of a junior doctor working in the NHS in the UK. It's an insight to what it is really like to work on the front line of the NHS. The NHS are fantastic and particularly over the last couple of weeks they have been really really great for me. <laughs> and the final book that I have is More Weird Things That Customers Say In Bookshops by Jen Campbell. I read Weird Things Customers Say In Bookshops also by Jen Campbell a few months ago and really really enjoyed it. It was such a funny, light, relatable read and I'm hoping this one, and I'm certain this one, will be the same. So that's it. That's all the books. <laughs> Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. I hope you guys are having a brilliant day and I will talk to you in my next video.